Hi everyone, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm doing my March TBR and it looks a little bit different in this video because I am not playing Play Your TBR right this month. I discussed this with my patrons and even before playing the four rounds with them and then the four rounds on the actual video, it turned out I had 18 books that I pretty much kind of sort of have to read in March and well 17, 18 maybe if I push a book in February to March. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. But as soon as I saw the stack I was like I cannot add any more books on this because if I lose to these books, I, I could have just put them in Play Your TV alright, but if I lost in these books then I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> a lot of obligations have just like come at me at once so I decided um, with the help of my patrons that every three months I sort of take the month off from playing Play Your TBR All Right. So in March, June, September and December I don't play Play Your TBR All Right. It is a really hard game, I will say it is a hard game and it is fun, I, I love playing it, don't get me wrong I still love playing it. But just every now and then I just have so many ideas and so many books that I want to read that I kind of don't want to have that pressure of Play Your TBR right where I might potentially lose. So I'm really sorry that there isn't a Play Your TBR right in this video. There will be a proper Play Your TBR right next month for April and I'm going to go balls to the wall. Next month I will make it up to you guys. I will give you the April Play Your TBR All Right that you deserve. So I guess I can get straight into the book since I don't have to explain what Play Your TBR All Right is. Uh, but if you do want to watch a Play Your TBR All Right video, then I do have a playlist. I'll link it down below. It is quite a fun game. Uh, stressful, but it is fun. I'm going to start off with the book club books that I need to read, and then the arcs that I really want to read this month, and then the middle grade, the young adult, and the adult books that I want to read. So I'm kind of sectioning it off a little bit in this video. The first book club book that I need to read is Amari and the Night Brothers by Baby Alston. This one is going to be a reread for me. I am reading this for Middle Grade Monthly. This is our March pick and I co-host that with Jade from JD Rereads and Pris. The last time I read this there was an art copy and it was back in November. I still remember pretty much everything that happens in it but I really do want to be able to discuss it better in the live show and we do have a special guest just kind of called Dickerson in that live show as well so it'll be really fun to see what her thoughts are on this as well. My hair's getting that long I'm having to wear hats now. <laughs> so Amari and the Night Brothers I have mentioned this quite a few times on my channel already but it does follow a young girl called Mari, her brother has been missing and she ends up finding an invitation for her to the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs and that's essentially a place where junior agents can learn about supernatural things and be agents in the field. It's kind of like Men in Black and it's just a fantastic book. I really enjoyed it. I gave this one five stars when I read it. It was one of my favourite middle grades of last year and this one came out in January so I've seen so many people I love read this and love this so I'm really excited to see other people's opinions on this for Middle Grade Monthly. I know people have been holding off on reading it for Middle Grade Monthly but the wait is well worth it, I promise you. Then with my patrons I am reading the third book in the Song of the Lioness series by Tamora Pierce. This one is called The Woman Who Writes Like a Man and this one is a bit of a swords and sorcery kind of series. It's a bit of an older one and the reason why my patrons really wanted me to read it was because for a few of them, I'm looking at you Danny, it's one that they really enjoyed as they were younger and it's just a really great way of getting back into reading books that we loved in our childhoods and that is a theme that I am taking with me for a, a selection later on. So the first book was Alana the First Adventure and it followed Alana who really wanted to be a knight but because she was a, a girl, she, I mean she starts off while she was quite young, um, she, because she's a girl she isn't allowed to be a knight so she ends up trading places with her brother so that he can go off to be a sorcerer and she can go off to be a knight in a king's castle and the first book it was very adventurous, it felt very Bronze Age-ish I want to say like kind of like Black Cauldron-esque and I was really enjoying it. I thought it was great. I gave the first book four stars I think and I am reading the second book this week with my patrons. So we are reading the third book in March and I cannot cannot wait. I'm like so tempted to just read them all at once because honestly I'm really enjoying them. But yeah this is the the patron book club pick that I'm reading with my patrons. And then for Wonder Along I am reading Holopox The Hunt from Oregon Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. I've mentioned this in every TBR video because they read Nevermore in January and then Wondersmith in February and then Holopox in March. Now I'm going to be part of the live show for this one. This is the one I'm going to be part of the live show for so I, I definitely need to read this one. I really wanted to reread the first two but then time just escaped me and I never got a chance to reread either of them so this will be another reread for me. However I am more dedicated to reading this one because I'm definitely going to be in the live show for it and did I tell you who hosts this? Wonder Along is being hosted by Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe and Sabine from Sabine's Book Nook. But yeah the Nevermore series I don't even want to 
tell you what it's about because I say what it's about in every single video, TBR video. But if this is your first TBR video of mine, then it does follow a young girl called Morrigan Crow. She is a cursed child. She gets whisked away to the land of Nevermore before she is killed on her 12th birthday, I think it was. And she ends up having to prove herself um, as part of this wondrous society. Speaking of, I have my wondrous society badge on for this occasion. But yeah, I love that book series so much, like honestly, oh. And then the last book club book pick that I need to read is Persuasion by Jane Austen. And I do own it, but I just can't for the life of me find it. But it is um, part of the Affectionately Austen book club that is hosted by Desi from Darling Desi. And I've been part of the live shows for the last two of the Affectionately Austen book clubs. But I have already read Persuasion. I read it when I was at university. However, I cannot remember a single bloody thing about it. <laughs> it was one of those books where, um, well, it was on a course where I was reading a book a week and fortunately Persuasion is quite short but I just can't remember a damn thing about it. It's a Jane Austen book so I feel like you already know what it's about. <laughs> and then for the arcs that I really want to read, one of the main ones I want to read is The Knights of a Promise by Annalise Avery. This one has my name on it. I don't know if you can say it properly. I was sent it from Scholastic and this was in my January haul. So if you've already watched that haul you would have already seen this and why I'm excited to read it. So this is set in a world where everything is ruled by science and everybody has a track of stars on their wrist that predicts their destiny and 13 year old Paisley, our main protagonist, is apparently destined to die. I believe Paisley ends up having to save her dragon touch brother and her mother and goes on this epic adventure to do that. I don't really know anything else beyond that. I'm just really excited to read it. It sounds like right up my street seriously. It sounds like a little bit like Wild Sparkish by Vashti Hardy which I live for. I do live for that. This one comes out on May 6th, which is the day before my birthday. <laughs> then I really want to read Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. This one I've had for a little while now and I just, I keep wanting to read it. It's just such a chunk, but I'm going to make the effort in March because this one comes out in April. But this one, it does follow two witches and I believe one of them is... Um, was exiled and was the heir to the throne and the other person who we follow is the daughter of the person who overthrew that that family, the, the 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 first family. That's what I believe it's about. I messed that up so badly. But the two witches are sworn enemies. However, they do have to join forces and come together to overthrow the one of their mothers. <laughs> and uh, she is like a really evil, evil witch. So again, it has witches in it. It just sounds amazing. I've had it for a little while now and it just come out in April, I think April 20th. So it'd be great if I can get this read before it comes out. The last art copy that I really want to get to is Vina and the Undead by Amy McCall. This one comes out on April 1st. So again I would love to read it before it comes out but this one is said to be very macabre it's a YA kind of horror with vampires and uh, a young girl comes from England to New Orleans to the town that inspired Dracula so Mina ends up getting a job at a horror movie mansion and ends up coming across a body of a young girl with puncture marks in her neck and I think that opens up this kind of mystery like vampires and are they real are they not it sounds really it just sounds really good and gothic and macabre and that's what people have been saying so it sounds really exciting and that's one that I'm definitely going to try and read before April 1st when it comes out. So onto the sound of books then and middle grade, Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. I've been really excited to read this one. I received this one I think a week or two ago but my February TBR has just been hectic so I couldn't just squeeze it in. But this one comes out on March 4th? March 4th. So this one, it sounds a little bit like sci-fi-ish but we do follow Cora who makes friends with somebody called Adrian who shows her pomegranate industries and they make these holograms that bring like dead people to life and that really fascinates Cora but I think there's like this web of secrets and uh, what's another word? <laughs> secrets and mysteries? There's things that Cora ends up saying and she needs to use her voice to be heard. So I did love A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol so I have high hopes for her second book. I think it's just going to be as amazing and wonderful as the first book. And this does have the sci-fi element that I think will push this to be in my favourite Elle McNichol book so far. And I also have Orphans of the Tide Shipwreck Island by Stuart Murray. This is the sequel to Orphans of the Tide which I read last year and it was such an, an underrated middle grade and I hadn't heard anybody talk about it and I ended up reading it and absolutely loved it. It had such amazing twists and turns in that story but it was set on an island that uh, is the last city on earth. One day this whale washes up on shore and the people there they cut open the whale and find a boy inside and he is rumoured to be the enemy returned and the enemy is this kind of 
um, omnipresent figure who you don't know if it exists or not and there is evil within the enemy and yeah so the, the main protagonist of Orphans of the Tide she doesn't believe that that boy is the enemy returned and she tries to save him and there's just like this incredible adventure and it's like very gothic-y and it was just a really fun fun time I really enjoyed it so I'm really excited to read the second book which also comes out March 4th I think I don't think it's out yet but I did get this sent to me from Puffin so thank you so much Puffin for sending me it and I'm just like so excited to read it I was like you know what I'm reading that as soon as it comes out so again thank you <laughs> then I'm also going to attempt to read the entire Arusha series by Roshni Chokshi before the fourth book comes out in April and I have already read Arusha and the End of Time I read this one back in May and I my mind is getting a little bit fuzzy about what happens in this one so I may as well just start from the beginning and reread this one and then read these two for the first time really excited for it I will probably do a reading vlog of me reading these and I, you know I do have reasons why I'm doing this but I'm not sharing <laughs> right now but I'm really excited the Arusha books they are part of the Rick Ride and Presents imprint well unless you're in the UK then it's just published by Scholastic. <laughs> the first book anyway did follow Arusha and she ends up accidentally unleashing a demon from this little magic lamp and this does have like lots of Hindu mythology in it. It's very Percy Jackson-esque and it's I guess it's why it's part of the Rick Ryden Presents line. But these are the first three books I think in the Pandava Quintet. I believe it's going to be five books instead of four now so I think it's a quintet. But yeah I'm really excited for the fourth book to come out in April so I definitely did want to try and attempt anyway to read all of these first. I do also really 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 like this I've been thinking about this for a long time and it's why I'm really excited about my March TBR because I'm finally going to attempt to start it in March but I really want to read through the entire Edge Chronicles series however I am going to be doing it in parts so I will read them in sagas and I think there are five sagas in the Edge Chronicles series and uh, they are each consistent of three books in each saga apart from one. I think it's just one book in it. Anyway, uh, the saga is written by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddell, and these are the three books in the Quint saga. These were not the first ones published. These ones are just the first in chronological order. Otherwise, I would have went in publication order, but it's kind of recommended to do it in chronological order because I am going to attempt, anyway, to do maybe a reading vlog a month of me reading the sagas within the Edge Chronicles, and I'm so excited to read Beyond the Deep Words, which is in the Twig saga, which will be in the next one. So I, I really want to read these ones first so I can get to that. But I'm, I mean, I'm sure these are amazing. I never got to read these when I was a kid. However, Beyond the Deep Woods is one of my childhood favourites. So I'm, I just really, I really, really, really want to reread those books and dive into the Edge Chronicles more than I ever have before. So I will be reading The Curse of the Gloam Glozer, The Winter Nights, and Clash of the Sky Galleons. I mean, I can kind of remember what the Twig Saga is kind of about, um, but the Edge Chronicles as a whole, it is just set uh, at the edge, and that is like this incredible place full of different locations, and loads of magical locations, loads of magical stories within it, and I, I, I can't really say anything else beyond that, really. There is the Deep Words, there is Sanctifrax, there is just like so much going on in the Edge Chronicles, but it is recommended to start here. So I will be reading the Quint Saga in March and then doing a Edge Chronicles series read along, I guess, once a month with a vlog. So I'll be doing volume one, the Quint Saga in March, and I'm so excited. So for YA, I really want to try and get to The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, and this one has just gotten so much buzz at the minute, but even then I've been so excited to read it for a long time because I believe this was pushed back from last year, so I've been waiting to get my hands on it, and then it finally came in February, so I was like, you know what, we've got to do it, haven't we? This one follows Dika, and she lives in this village where if you're blood runs red you can stay in the village but if it runs gold then then that means you're a demon and it turns out that Deka is well she has gold blood. She ends up joining an army of girls just like her and I think she has to try and save the world. <laughs> That's all I pretty much know about it but again I'm just so excited to read it. It is a brand new release and I think one of the first YA books that I will be reading in 2021. I still haven't really picked up a YA book. We do have Mina on the Undead and which is steeped in gold but I think this, yeah, this month is the only month I've been reading YA this year, so I'm really excited about that. And then finally, the last two books I will be saving for the only readathon that I am doing in March, and that is Becca's Bookoplathon, which is running from like the weekend of the 20th and the 21st of March, and it is a 48 hour 
kind of readathon that is based on Becca's Bookopoly board. I will link Becca's announcement video in the description because it's an incredible announcement video. Um, but I am hosting a live sprint for it on the like the the Sunday morning kind of it's like the midnight of the Saturday slash Sunday morning so midnight till 4 a.m on the Sunday that's that's GMT that's essentially what I'm doing but I really 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 wanted to do a weekend reading vlog of reading Sarah J Mass, and I really need to read A Court of Silver Flames however none of my three copies have arrived yet and I'm absolutely fucking gutted but I do also need to read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass before I get to A Court of Silver Flames which I'll put on the screen here because yeah I really want to try and catch up with the series and then that's the whole Akatar series done. I was supposed to read this like ages ago but I just didn't. So yes A Call of Silver Flames is my main priority and it would be the only book that I'd want to read that weekend however I do need to squeeze this one in so I think it's doable. I do think it's doable. Uh, as I said I'm doing a four hour live reading sprint and I will be doing that with Lexi from Alexandra Roslin and I'm just so excited it's gonna be a proper sleepover party. We're gonna have like snacks and like hot chocolate or wine. I, I don't know what I've decided on yet um, but there will be reading of course and maybe some games in between so I think that'll just be like really really fun I can't wait I cannot cannot wait for that weekend so yes of course Silver Flames is what I'm going to be reading for that mainly but also squeezing this one in too so now you can kind of see why I am skipping play or TBR right this month because if I had to fit eight more books on this and then imagine if I lost all eight rounds and they turned out to be books I didn't really want to read I would have been fucked. So yeah, these are all of the books that I need to read. And I'm not too mad about it actually. I've been doing pretty well with my reading in February. And you know, there's a lot on here that I do genuinely have to read, so it's not like I can just skip it. And of course, a couple of vlogs that I'm really excited to do. So there we have it. Those are the 18 books I'm reading or potentially reading in March. No, I definitely have to. Like there's no leeway. I have to read these ones. And also I managed to go through that without my coffee getting cold, so. I call that a win. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Again, I'm so sorry I didn't play your TBR right this month. I am going to be taking a break from it every three months. So I hope you're okay with that. Anyway, please let me know what you're going to be reading in March. Don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That would mean the world to me. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.